Hey and welcome to 31 Days of Horror. This is day eight. I'm Alex and I've got this uh, French vampire movie tonight. It's from uh, 1975. The director is Jean Roland and I'm speaking about Lips of Blood. It's a wonderful, mysterious, atmospheric uh, slice of uh, French uh, independent uh, sexploitation uh, horror erotica. This is from one of the outstanding independent uh, French directors, Jean Roland. I've seen this movie before, some years ago, late night on TV, and I took uh, this opportunity to revisit it. The movie stars Jean-Luc Philippe and Annie Bell, who you might uh, have seen in uh, Last House on the Edge of the Park or uh, Absurd, Anthropophagus 2. She plays this uh, mysterious woman in white. The main character, uh, he sees um, this odd advertising poster for some perfume which strangely features this gothic ruin. And this picture, viewing this picture of the ruins, uh, triggers off his uh, uh, distant memory from his childhood and he has this fla flashback of meeting this gorgeous girl dressed all in white in this ruin as he was a kid. The character then confronts his mother at this uh, party in Paris and asks her, do you remember this girl? And she says no, so the character doesn't trust his mom and he goes in search of this uh, mysterious girl. He has this feeling that he has to revisit that ruin, uh, this uh, kind of semi-abandoned uh, ruins of a castle somewhere in France. In his search for this mysterious girl, uh, the hero somehow unleashes several vampires who were trapped in this crypt in a, in a cemetery somewhere in Paris. And these vampires go off uh, on a little rampage through the night streets. Lips of Blood is uh, one of Jean Roland's more acclaimed films and it's also one of the easier ones. Easy in the sense that although it has all the tra trademark Roland um, slowness, oddness, a certain level of, um, let's say, theatricality to it. It's nevertheless got enough story to be appreciated by a more casual viewer who's not already obsessed with this kind of uh, poetic decay which uh, Roland so expertly captures in his films. Lips of Blood features some of iconic Jean Roland images uh, like semi-nude women uh, marching through cemeteries. Also some of the more ridiculous images with uh, some of the actors not exactly in character and sort of grinning uh, <laughs> or suppressing laughter and some characters extremely wooden and expressionless in their close-ups. This movie was uh, partially cast with adult performers, so performances are variable and dialogues in this film are quite poetic and sort of lean towards more theatrical dialogue. Also, if you uh, watch the movie subtitled, so it creates another layer of uh, alienation for the viewer. So uh, it has that Jean, Jean Roland sense of uh, the images really speak to you and engage you, very much so, whereas acting takes you out of the movie and this is this uh, I think odd oddness about Jean Roland in that he he's so averse to directing people he just kind of films them as if they were just uh, almost like inanimate objects he doesn't really try and mold them into performing in a particular way it doesn't seem that way from when I, when I observe his movies there is a certain stiffness to people when there are group shots like in the wide shot when you see people walk it's almost like they are made to reduce their they're made to be less expressive <laughs> rather than more which is the tradition I guess in a more traditional films. Speaking of Jean Roland, he's always lumped together with Jess Franco and Joe D'Amato as this uh, sexploitation, um, as this prolific European horror erotica sexploitation director. And in a way he is, if we were to try and uh, choose what sets Jean Roland a bit apart from those other two, from Jess Franco and Joe D'Amato, I would say in the Roland films, characters do really genuinely try and speak to one another in, in that he searches maybe a bit of pathos. He 
has a bit more claim at being an artist than the other two. All three filmmakers are extremely prolific, but John Rolan, I think he's more, he's the most sentimental one of the three as well. His movies are unashamedly sentimental and can can be a bit gushy. I mean, how many gushy vampire films have you seen lately? Lips of Blood has some of my favorite sequences in any, in any Jean Roland film. There is that nocturnal chase with this uh, moustached hitman and it starts in this nocturnal aquarium and then continues through Paris Metro and onto this uh, large uh, kind of a plaza where there are these fountains and amazing monuments. If you feel that Jean Roland films are a bit odd, remember where he comes from, that he is extremely Im uh, impressed by certain serials which used to run in cinemas, those movies like uh, Louis Fayard's uh, Vampires serial, for example. Those were silent movies, silent adventure movies, before there was television. And that aesthetic, that certain... Um, also with framing, I think it, it also transpires in Jean Roland that, that a lot of the time he's happy to keep his camera quite static, uh, let the characters move through the frame and cre create interest, visual interest through that, that rather than having a lot of tracking shots or zooming a lot. Some of the more successful aspects of uh, Lips of Blood are visuals and how he lights scenes. There is a nocturnal scene which looks like something out of 1980s Bronx. Where they found some really bombed out houses some, somewhere, condemned buildings in Paris and lit them in a very eerie way at night. And there is that sense of location of being present there, which I really appreciate about Jean Roland's uh, cinema. It's very seldom, if ever, that Roland shot on sound stages. He always used real uh, locations, and I think he grabbed also his friends here and there for supporting uh, parts. And uh, that way his films have a sense of veracity to them which the stories themselves don't. So the stories Roland tells are like fairy tales and they're quite obsessive. There is the theme of memory which is greatly explored here in Lips of Blood and also in another beautiful film which is uh, Night of the Hunted, which I can highly recommend. So this theme of memory and not necessarily real memory. So it's we're, we're in this last year Marian Bad uh, territory here a little bit, is important to Roland. And just the iconography in his movies, the female body framed around some uh, crucifixes or um, tombstones or those pylons uh, by the beach. It's Jean Roland is a little bit in the background right now. I don't think he's, um, he's enjoyed much of a renaissance since his passing. I, I, feel, that he's, uh, I feel like his movies have sort of been uh, eclipsed a little bit by other um, exploitation filmmakers who've been getting a bit more exposure. So uh, I thought I'd rewatch uh, Lips of Blood and take this opportunity to uh, just uh, praise Jean Roland a bit more. He is not a director who's a good action director. The vampire attacks and murders and shootouts in this particular film, in Lips of Blood, are quite crudely staged and wouldn't convince anybody today, and I doubt they were convincing back when the film came out. However, this does not mean this uh, movie is rubbish. Lips of Blood has a lot to offer, even though it's a slow-moving film, and it's certainly not to all tastes because of how uh, dark some of it is. It's a fairy tale, but it's, it's a dark one, so it's not for um, all audiences, but uh, Jean Roland really deserves a bit more exposure, is all I can say. Remember, he's also the helmer of Zombie Lake, which is one of the ultimate trash movies from the 80s, which is the ultimate Nazi zombie trash epic from Eurocine. I think I'll be making more Jean Roland videos in the future, so I enjoyed revisiting Lips of Blood, and I hope I can inspire you to uh, give a Jean Roland movie ago, for example, uh, Grapes of Death, Lips of Blood, Fascination, Night of the Hunted, those are my favorites. 
Zombie Lake is a great trash film, but purely trash. And there is, of course, The Living Dead Girl. So that was day eight of uh, 31 Days of Horror. I'll see you tomorrow.